Indeed, all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and controller of all that happens in the universe. And we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, first of all, brothers and sisters, I must say that, MashaAllah, our congregation for Dhuhr may not be as large as it used to be in Ramadan, but at the same time, our numbers have not significantly dropped. And I think that's a, a wonderful thing. During Ramadan, a brother had uh, suggested to me, and I share this uh, idea with all of you, that the one thing that is different in Ramadan is that we don't eat lunch. And as a result, we find that the masjid is full for Salat al -Dhuh. And at that time, the brother suggested perhaps what you and I brothers and sisters should consider is perhaps putting in a 10 or 15 minutes extra or half an hour extra, whatever it might be, in the morning or in the evening, so that not only can you also do lunch after Ramadan, but perhaps you will also be able to find a time to come. And it seems like, mashallah, uh, this is working for some of us. It may not work for everyone, and we understand that. But uh, for those who, for whom it works, of course, that is a beautiful thing. And um, I am actually very happy to see that our numbers in the masjid, uh, for example, today is, is quite uh, large, in as much as it might not be as large as in Ramadan. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. And may He continue to inspire us and motivate us to hold firmly to the message that He has revealed. Uh, in addition to that, brothers and sisters, I'm, I know that all of us by now are perhaps well aware and also following with great interest the evolving issue of the film that, was made, that, that raised the great uproar last week. And of course, what we hear very often is on the one hand, people say that violence is not the right way to respond to such outrageous, uh, such an outrageous film. Uh, we also hear that uh, people arguing for the freedom of speech and expression. And we hear people arguing that yes, it is okay, it is a good thing that freedom of expression and freedom of, spe of speech, <laughs> that these freedoms are protected However, a line has to be drawn when it comes to spreading hate. And so, mashallah, there's a lot of debate uh, for and against freedom of expression and other things. But there is a, a hadith that I would like to share with you. A hadith that Shaykh al-Albani graded as Sahih. And this is a statement that Aisha radiallahu anha made in describing the behavior and the attitude of the Prophet And when I read this, I said, SubhanAllah, you know, this is perhaps the secret why the Prophet enjoyed and lived such a peaceful and calm life. In spite of all the rumors and accusations back and forth, remember Quraysh, they called him a madman. They said he was possessed. They even accused him of learning the Quran from another human being. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالُوا إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرٌ They said it is a human being who is teaching him these words. Allah says in refuting this claim, لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُونَ إِلَيْهِ أَعْجَمِي وَهَذَا لِسَانُ عَرَبِيُّ مُبِينَ the language or the person they are uh, implying 
is teaching the Prophet ﷺ. He's a foreigner. Arabic is not his mother tongue. While this Quran is, is clear and pure Arabic language. So someone who is, who is a foreigner, who is not an Arab, who is, whose mother tongue is not Arabic to begin with, cannot definitely produce this kind of literature that even the Arabs, the greatest uh, uh, poets and intellectuals of the Arabs at that time could not uh, produce. So, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ, all these accusations were made. I know this film, if you've watched clips of it by now, or all of it, or some of it, uh, it, it, it depicts, or it tries to depict the Prophet ﷺ as a lunatic, uh, as someone who made up stories, as someone who was a womanizer and things like that. Of course, we know that these things are totally untrue. And it is not untrue because we, the Muslims, say so. It is untrue because history has recorded the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And so the claims of these people, regardless of their motive and their hidden agendas, cannot change reality. The fact that they try to portray the Prophet ﷺ in that light will never change the reality of the noble human being he was, alayhi salatu wasalam, it cannot change that. It cannot change what history has witnessed and recorded as well, in terms of his kindness, in terms of his sincerity, in terms of his humility, in terms of the fact that he did not make up the message of Islam to pull one over the people, but that this is indeed a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, that's, that is why, brothers and sisters, in Surah Noon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this issue of the rumors and the false uh, accusations and the fabrications that the disbelievers made up at the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu This they, they refer to him as a madman and claim that he was being possessed by, by the devil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes all of this and Allah says, مَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِمَجْنُونَ You are not, O Muhammad, by the mercy of your Lord, a man who is possessed or insane. That's what they claim, but you are not like that. وَإِنَّ لَكَ لَأَجْرًا غَيْرَ مَمْنُونَ And indeed, you will, you will get a reward that is unfailing, so your efforts will not be in vain. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed, you are of a very high standard of character. This standard of character is such that the Prophet ﷺ did not fabricate lies to counter their lies. SubhanAllah. He did not engage them at a level where he used up his energy and, and time in, in debating with them whether these claims were true or not. There were instances, of course, when the Prophet ﷺ spoke up, spoke the truth, and encouraged the companions to stand up and, 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 and speak the truth. When, uh, during the Battle of Uhud, when Quraysh managed to attack them from behind and from in front, and he took refuge in the mountain of Uhud itself, and Abu, Abu Sufyan came as close as he could come safely, and he said to the Muslims, Today is for the day of, of Badr. Because Quraysh saw it as a victory for them. They, they saw it as they were able to get revenge from the Muslims for what happened to them in Badr. And the Prophet ﷺ told the companions with him to respond to this claim of Abu Sufyan. And they said to him, O Messenger of Allah, we don't know what to say. He said to them, tell him it's not the same. Badr and Uhud here, what had transferred, it's not the same. Why? Because the Prophet said to tell, to tell him, قَتْلَانَا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَقَتْلَاكُمْ فِي النَّارِ Our dead, those who were killed, they are in paradise. But your dead, those who were killed in, oh, in, in Badr, they're going to be in the hellfire. So it's not the same. And then Abu Sufyan boastingly uh, uh, made a statement praising and exalting their false gods. So he said to the Muslims, A'la Hubal. May Hubal, this is one of their, their major idols, may he be exalted. And the Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba with him, 
Answer him. They said, we don't know what to say. He said, قُلْ اللَّهُ أَعْلَى وَأَجَلُ Abu Sufyan said, أَعْلَى هُبَلْ The Prophet ﷺ said to the Sahaba, tell him, Allahu a'la wa ajal. Allah is greater and more majestic than your false gods. So there, there are some in, in instances, of course, where the Prophet ﷺ replied, per se, but did not get dragged into lengthy debates about the, the truth of their statements. <coughs> So perhaps the secret in how the Prophet ﷺ managed to do this, so this is the behavior that Allah refers to here, you are on a high standard of character. He did not lower himself to their level, which sadly sometimes that's what we Muslims do when we respond to certain things. We need not lower ourselves, brothers and sisters. We need not lower ourselves. In fact, the best course of action for us would be to continue to observe that high level of character and morality that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to stand, to stand for and to live by. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, this is in Surah Noon. فَسَتُبُصِرُوا وَيُبُصِرُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ So you will soon come to know Muhammad and they will also soon come to know which one of you, you or, or, or they, are possessed or insane? In soon this reality, every human being will have to come to grips with this. But nevertheless, the hadith, brothers and sisters, that I would like to share with you is the statement of Aisha radiallahu anha when she said, Kana an Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she's describing him here, remember that. Kana kathira. There are many descriptions to the Prophet ﷺ, but here she mentions two. She said, His nature was, he used to be silent a lot, he didn't use to speak a lot. To be silent a lot. And so as a result, he didn't say things that afterwards he had to apologize for. This happens a lot these days. Almost every day somebody says something that they have to apologize for. But the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that we are going to be held responsible for even the things we say. He has taught us, ﷺ, that even if we speak the truth, even what we say is the truth, we are still responsible to some extent for, the, for certain outcomes. This is why when he was asked about backbiting, he said backbiting is saying something negative about a person who is not present. When a man stood up and said to the Prophet ﷺ, what if what I'm saying is the truth about my brother, O Messenger of Allah? Because that's what everybody says. It's the truth, it's facts. But the Prophet ﷺ, in this hadith, he taught us that we need to think of not just the fact that what we're saying is the truth, we, probably, we need to look at what is our motive of saying this statement, even if it is the truth. So he said to the man, if what you're saying about your brother is the truth, that is backbiting you. It does not absolve you from the sin. So you need to, to be conscious of the consequence of what you say. And if the Prophet said to the man, if what you say is not true about your brother, this is worse, because now you have invited, invented and fabricated a lie against him. This is worse. So what we need to realize and understand, brothers and sisters, is yes, based on the concept of Al-Amru bil Ma'aruf wa Nahi wa Munkar, based on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stand up firmly for what is just and so on. Islam has, has enshrined and given human beings the, the, the freedom of speech and expression. But what, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta ta has taught us as well is that speech comes with responsibilities. It has limits. It has boundaries. We were not given the ability to speak by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or sometimes we say 
We were not given mouths to just speak like that. We were given it to speak, but with the understanding that we will be held responsible for the things we say. So, the Prophet ﷺ, what he did was, he used to stay quiet, stay silent. He did not feel he needed to say, to speak every minute of the day. When there was nothing to say, he stayed quiet. He was conscious enough that his, his words would have far-reaching effects. You're totally to be blamed. But what people have to realize is that when they say things or they do things, or they make things like a movie, whatever, and they claim. But in any case, the thing is, people can always, you know, we can, we can fool each other in terms of what our hidden motives are. But at the end of the day, I think, uh, most often we can see beyond the, the false claims that people make. But at the very least, as Muslims, we should realize that speech, is a responsibility. This is a, a, a faculty that Allah has given to us and we're responsible for its use. Just like we are for our eyes and the things we look at and our ears and the things we listen to and our hands and the things we do with them and our feet and the places we go to with them. 